Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Friday, September 15th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, the busy Atlantic hurricane season of 2017 continues, and we have several regions to watch this weekend and into next week. We have Tropical Storm Jose, northeast of the Bahamas. This is the same Jose that came up as a strong hurricane just east of the Leeward Islands and uh, made its way to the northwest, did a little loop, and then is now about to move northward between Bermuda and the eastern seaboard of the United States. And this has been around forever and could be around for another week, uh, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. We'll talk about that in a bit. We also have a tropical wave in the central Atlantic moving toward the Lesser Antilles over the next couple of days, and this has a significant chance of developing into a tropical cyclone of some kind as it nears the islands or as it moves through the islands, and so that will be an area of immediate concern for land areas, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. We also have Tropical Depression 14 way out in the eastern Atlantic, sort of off your satellite picture here, just southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. This is way out there, and the National Hurricane Center forecast brings it west-northwestward, little change in strength, maybe a little bit of strengthening, and uh, not really a concern in the immediate future and may never be a concern for land, but it's out there. We'll keep an eye on it. So let's start off with the wave east of the Caribbean. Here's the Lesser Antilles Island chain on this satellite shot from NASA, and you can see the big wave here approaching from the southeast. And uh, this is still just a wave axis, a typical kink in the monsoon trough. You can see the southwesterly flow here, northeasterly flow here, and there's really not a closed low here. It's just a shear flow uh, with a, a wave axis tilted southwest to northeast here. But it is a healthy one. You can see this large area of convection that has persisted over the last couple of days, and this represents an area of large-scale heating. And when you have this kind of heating, it causes air to leave the system aloft, and you can see that evidence of that in these cirrus clouds racing away from the system to the north. When that happens, it causes the air pressure to lower in the region of the system, and that can eventually lead to a closed circulation forming. And as the system moves west-northwest, we're going to be watching for that uh, to see if a closed low forms. Once that happens, especially this time of year, uh, your chances of getting a tropical cyclone go way up. And uh, this time of year, conditions are pretty favorable. And here, indeed, we don't have a lot of shear. You can see the cirrus expanding toward the northwest. We do have a bit of an upper trough here, as you can see, a uh, northerly flow in the eastern Caribbean, southerly flow aloft near the system of interest. And so there is a little bit of an upper trough, but this is backing away toward the west as the system comes on behind it. So there's not a lot of shear expected to impact the system over the next couple of days, and conditions are generally favorable for this to develop. Now, it is still quite broad and elongated, again, this big wave axis. So although a closed low is likely to eventually form, the exact timing of that and where that happens are still uncertainties. As always, when you have a big system like this, you got to wait for it to really develop before you know quite where it's going and where it's going to be and how fast it's going to strengthen uh, because it's just too large and lumpy here uh, to know exactly what's going to happen with it until something starts to consolidate. If you look at the European model, this is the low-level flow and vorticity in color here. This is for tonight's forecast. You can just see the, the wave axis tilted southwest to northeast. And you'll note that uh, the other thing that happens with these is if they start tilting more toward the vertical with time as they come west, that's also a favorable uh, sign for development. And we see that by Sunday night, we have the wave axis is tilted a little more south to north, indicating a greater conversion of trade wind energy into wave energy here. And you can see a closed low is trying to form along the wave axis on the northern end on the European model. This is something the European has been slow to pick up on, but it now is trending toward a stronger looking system here as it approaches the islands. And this is again, this is Sunday evening here. So we're getting, we're getting pretty close. It's only a couple days really from being close to the islands. So this is something to keep a close eye on if you live in the Lesser Antilles, as uh, the NHC gives this a 90% chance of developing within the next five days, 50% within the next two. And we have seen models trend toward development here, and the GFS is even a little quicker with development. So we could even have a tropical storm before this reaches the Lesser Antilles. And so this is something to keep an eye on if you live in the island chain, as this is only a couple of days away now. And last but not least, we have a uh, tropical storm, former Hurricane Jose. This has been downgraded uh, from a hurricane to a tropical storm. We do have a recon plane going in there to more properly assess the strength of the system, and you'll see that data after this video is posted. But for now, uh, the system has had rather ragged convection for the last day or so, 
and doesn't have much of an inner core at the moment and you might question why that is. There is some shear but there's not a lot. You can still see outflow expanding on the western side so the shear is not the strongest shear ever uh, but it, it could be that it's been looping. It has done a little loop here and so it's been sort of running over its own track a little bit and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if some of this water underneath of it has been dynamically cooled a bit and it could be suffering a little bit from that and so I would expect as this eventually starts moving north here it'll get into some untouched warm water that it hasn't moved over before and that will likely help it regain some of its core convection and we could see it regain hurricane strength at some point when it moves north. However it will be resisted by the fact that you can see this general southwest to northeast flow in the upper levels here on this water vapor picture just to its northwest and so as Jose moves into this there will be some increasing shear out of the westerly direction and so, and so it will be fighting that as it comes north and so there's going to be a balance between the shear fighting it and the warm water trying to help it out and uh, so some strengthening is possible and currently forecast by the National Hurricane Center but not a ton of strengthening and as this comes north it becomes a steering concern as to how close it might get to the eastern seaboard here as it tries to turn out. Uh, will it be close enough to bring impacts potentially from Cape Hatteras up into New England? Uh, that's what we're currently watching for. If you look at the GFS 500 millibar forecast out to Sunday, we can see the storm passing up now between Bermuda here and Cape Hatteras here. And this could get close enough uh, just in the short term uh, later this weekend and into Monday to bring perhaps gales, tropical storm force winds, into the Cape Hatteras region, certainly high surf and rip currents, and that goes for the entirety of the eastern seaboard really here. Uh, dangerous weather at the beaches, do be careful and uh, don't go out into the water if it's dangerous to do so. Uh, that will be uh, an impact all up and down the coast. But as this comes north, the question is how close does it get? Uh, in this kind of a pattern, you can see there's a little bit of a ridge to its east here, and it's not, it's not a big overwhelming ridge. This thing to its north is not going to steer it west. That's not what this does. Uh, this kind of flow would ease the system gradually off to the northeast, slower than your normal recurving hurricane, um, but it would be a slow turn to the east nonetheless. The question is how close does this turn get to the Mid-Atlantic and New England? A couple of subtleties here. One again is that you have this ridge, but you also have this shortwave trough nearing the Hudson Bay. Now with every shortwave trough there's a shortwave ridge and you can see that ridge right here, this little anticyclonic clockwise kink in the jet stream. You can see the big jet stream right here. Here's this kink in it and as this comes eastward it might link up with this ridge just a little bit. So you have a, a little ridge here and you have this guy coming toward the east and so you could get a little bit of a connection between the two and if you get a connection between the two it can help the system come a little bit farther west with time. So when we go out to uh, early Tuesday morning, you can see that the shortwave ridge has come into the Nova Scotia, southeastern Canada area, and you have the original ridge to the east of the system. The two are sort of linking up just a little bit here, so you can see this little skinny ridge trying to force the system toward the north, and uh, this gets a little uncomfortably close on some of these model runs to New England, Cape Cod, that sort of area. Now again, this is not going to get jammed westward into you know the mid-Atlantic area on this kind of a pattern because you have this jet to the north and the steering flow is toward the north and eventually as the shortwave trough comes to the east this will eventually have to turn out. The question again is how close does it get? Does it get all the way up to the Cape Cod area before turning? Jamming this right up into New England is pretty hard to do in this kind of pattern because this jet is here uh, but again the turn could be close. So we're going to be watching this quite carefully over the next few days but this is still four to five days out in terms of being near New England and so there is some uncertainty into exactly how strong this ridge is and where Jose is. The models have had a little bit of trouble capturing Jose's short-term motion recently but most of those difficulties seem to be past us so in general this this turn toward the north is a pretty certain but the you know the plus or minus hundred miles left or right here we're not going to be able to tell you four to five days in advance so if you're worried about this bringing impacts to New England keep an eye on the official forecast it's still a few days out but it's worth keeping a close eye on here. This is the official forecast bringing it up and uh, you can see it. it is pretty close by day five here to Cape Cod. This is close enough that it would likely be bringing gales and tropical storm force winds to these coastal areas but again taking this position verbatim is not a good idea at a day five forecast. You can see the cone of uncertainty. This is the area in which the typical errors lie and so the system could easily be anywhere within this this circle within four to five days middle part of next week 
and so it could get a little closer to the coast or it could move even farther away from the coast. Which one of those we couldn't really tell you. It really depends on some of the fine details that we just talked about over the next few days, but it is something to keep an eye on. We can't really tell you what kind of impacts could happen here, but keep an eye on the official forecast from the NHC and your local National Weather Service office as we get closer to the event. And again, we're close enough now that as the, the track is um, by early Monday and Monday afternoon here could be close enough to Cape Hatteras that we might expect some impacts, potentially gusty winds, that sort of thing. And again, rip currents all the way up and down the coast here are going to be an issue and uh, could be life-threatening if you're in the water so uh, do be very careful if you're going to the beaches. As this comes up, if it does hypothetically get close to New England, you might ask how strong it could be. Again, this could re-strengthen to a hurricane here over the next couple of days. By the time it gets farther north, though, there is some good news. Um, the Gulf Stream is up here, and this is a big boundary between really warm water to the south and really cold water comparatively near New England. Now, the Gulf Stream is a little farther away from New England than usual. It is a, usually a little bit closer than it is right now, and so you have this abnormally larger area of cold water north of the Gulf Stream, and since the hurricane is not going to be moving as fast as your typical recurving storm, it's going to p spend a longer amount of time over this cold water if it gets this far north and so it would weaken due to this cold water. Now how much would it weaken? Depends on how fast it's moving and what its structure is at the time and so it could still of course bring dangerous weather if it gets close enough to New England but it would be weakening some because it would be spending um, an abnormally long amount of time over this cold water approaching landfall. In addition we have this pattern where we talked about this big jet stream sort of over overarching everything and the main jet is disconnected from where the storm is and so this does a couple of things. If the storm is here off of Cape Hatteras by early Monday on the GFS, this is the upper level flow. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of shear. You've got this little trough over the Carolinas, which could be shearing it a bit. Not as much as if this main jet was dipping down and you had a big trough here. That's not what we have. So there is less shear, but at the same time, this jet is disconnected. So you can see the outflow channel from Jose does not connect to the main jet that's up here. What that means is that the system doesn't have a lot of baroclinic energy to help keep it strong if it were to move toward New England. So that cold water I talked about would be able to weaken the storm and there wouldn't be much jet energy uh, to help make up for that. So the system would likely weaken here and it doesn't have a big jet to connect to. This could also reduce uh, the potential for heavy rainfall over New England. There would still likely be rainfall if this got close enough, but not quite as much as, say, you know, a big event like Sandy, which phased with the jet up here as it moved northwest. That's not what we have here. We don't have a lot of baroclinic energy getting involved. So this would likely weaken uh, at a pretty steady pace as it recurved here into the colder water, but it could be strong enough to cause some significant problems if it gets close enough. And so this is worth keeping an eye on if you live in the New England and Mid-Atlantic area. And again, uh, tropical storm impacts could potentially get quite close to Cape Hatteras as this passes by to the east on the west side here you could get north northeast winds uh, pretty close to the cape coming off the water here so again there's the official forecast uh, again a lot of uncertainty here once we get into the day four to five range and how close exactly this gets to the u.s coast still uncertain but we'll be keeping an eye on it and we'll be more sure of things as time goes on as we always are over the next couple of days several days yet to watch it but by the middle part of next week we could see some impacts getting quite close to portions of the northeastern United States. So that's Jose. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on this wave as it nears the Lesser Antilles in a couple days. This could be a threat and could become a storm during that time. So keep an eye out if you're in the Lesser Antilles. And then Tropical Depression 14 is way out in the middle of nowhere. Not much of a threat to anyone at the moment and uh, may never be. So that's the tropics today. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.